title of the message is Develop Your Imagination. That's the title of our series. So let's say this out loud. Say, I need to develop my imagination. Let's say that. I look to your neighbor and say, you need to develop your imagination. Come on, tell them. Tell somebody. You've got you to develop your imagination. Now, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, the NIV says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. New King James Version. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. New Living Translation, faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us the assurance about things that we cannot see. And then I gave you the layman paraphrase last week, and I think this is a legit translation. Faith is the manifestation of imagination. Uh, we took some time to develop this before, that really when the Bible in the New Testament talks about hope, uh, we need to utilize our imagination. We imagine that something good can happen instead of something bad happening. So faith is a manifestation of the imagination when a dream becomes reality. That's a good paraphrase. Let's read it out loud together. Faith is the manifestation of imagination when a dream becomes reality. One more time, please. Faith is the manifestation of imagination when a dream becomes reality. So there's three things that I want to talk to you about today. I have a few questions for you. Number one, do you need a new mirror? Come on, look to your neighbor and ask him if they need a new mirror. Secondly, do you need some new glasses? Come on, find somebody say, hey, do you need some new glasses? And then thirdly, do you need a new image? Oh, come on, find someone else and ask him, do you need a new image? Do you need a new image? So, First of all, do you need a new mirror today? Okay. Now, I want to pull up a couple of pictures. I think it's important for us to have these visuals, especially because we're talking about developing our imagination. So I want to show you this first picture of being in the dark. Now, they've actually done some studies. In the 1960s, there were two people that volunteered to spend about half a year in darkness. And when they came out, they were incredibly disoriented. They had lost track of time. In fact, one of the people thought they were taking power naps of about 30 minutes, and they were sleeping for 30 hours at a time. Can you imagine? Completely disoriented, okay? So in this darkness, it's hard to see and imagine great things. Now, let's pull up the next picture. Uh, this is really more where the Lord wants you to live. Can you say amen? doesn't want you in a dark tunnel. He wants you out in open and wide spaces. Okay? He wants you to be able to see some amazing things. How about this next picture, this next landscape? He wants you to see the possibilities. He wants you to see not a tunnel, but where that road is going. And you can imagine amazing things. You can imagine incredible mountains that you're going to climb and, and views that you're going to experience and adventures uh, that you are going to experience. Now, God doesn't want you in the tunnel. He wants you in open spaces. Amen? But you need to look into the right mirror. Now, I've said before, and I'll get back to this, but you have a spirit, you have a soul, and you have a body. Okay? Now, in John chapter 3 and verse 3, the Bible says this, Jesus says, In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Now, don't miss the connection there. You can't see the kingdom unless you're born again. I'm going to tell you, you cannot really see the possibilities and the amazing potential that God has for you unless you're born again. So people are limited. If they're not born again today, if they're not a new creation in Christ, they are limited by what they can see. Okay? So we need to be born again. We need to become a, a, a new person. All right? Now, when you are born again, you have the ability then to turn the lights on. In fact, the 
there's imagery in the scripture where Jesus refers to salvation as being the light, the light coming. So, so example, everyone has a spirit. Everyone is a spirit, but not everyone's born again. Everyone is a spirit, but people that aren't saved, people that aren't born again, their spirits are in darkness. It's like their spirits are dead, if you will, uh, but, but they're living in darkness. When you become born again, the light shines on your spirit and you're awakened. Uh, you become alive in Christ. Bible says that you become a new creation in Christ. So, so your spirit becomes born again. You're like, you're like a new person. In your spirit, there's light that has come on. Okay? So think of it in terms of this way. Your spirit is here. This is my spirit. And your soul is in the middle. This is my soul. My body is over here. So you have three compartments, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? But before you're born again, your spirit is in darkness. Your spirit is, is dormant. The light needs to shine on your spirit. You need to see the light of Christ, and you become born again when you acknowledge Christ as your Savior, when you acknowledge that you're a sinner and you need a Savior, and you ask Christ to be your Savior, you become born again. Amen, church? Okay, now go with me to, to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians 4 really describes this in a powerful way. 2 Corinthians 4, look at verse, verses, I'll start with verse 4, 4 to 6. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. Okay, so think in three compartments, spirit, soul, body. Before you're born again, the enemy blinds you. Know some neighbors like that? Were you that way? Do you know some people that it just seems like they're blinded to the truth? They can't see it. They're blinded to the light. They're in the tunnel. They're still in the tunnel. Okay? So, so they're, they're blinded by the God of this age. They're blinded by Satan. They cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. God wants them to see the glory of Christ. God wants them to, to, to understand salvation. Who is the image of God? Okay, so, so for we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as servants for Jesus' sake. Verse 6, for God who is light, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus. That's a powerful verse. Can you see how God is saying, let light shine on the spirit you become born again, now you can see the kingdom of God, as Jesus said in John 3, 3, and you can get the right knowledge to discover who Christ is and who you are. I'm going to repeat that. You're in darkness, blinded by the enemy, but the light of Jesus shines into your heart, into your spirit. What happens? Now you become born again. And you can see the light. You can see now the glory of Christ. You can see the image of Christ. Okay? You can see who Jesus is. And you're born again. Now you have the ability, pull that scripture back up, you have the ability to get the right knowledge to discover what God wants you to do. He made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus. Most people are in the dark tunnel. Before they're born again, they don't have a revelation of the knowledge of Christ. Now, may I say this to you? Many Christians live their entire life. They're born again. They receive the light, but they haven't now gone to the next level of understanding the right knowledge so they can succeed in the things that God wants them to succeed. Okay? So you got to be born again. Say that. i got to be born again. You got to let the light shine. Say, say, I got to turn on the lights. I got to turn on the light. So, so draw that up on your, on your video screen. Can you turn the lights on? You're, you've been born again. Now, now turn the lights on so that it can begin to shine. Watch this from your spirit into the compartment of your soul and then into the compartment of your body. Okay. All right. Now, 
what part of you turns on the light? Your soul. Your soul is your mind. Your soul is your intellect, your emotions, and your decisions. You have the decision to turn the lights on. Said another way, another visual would be like this. You have a flashlight, and you can turn that flashlight on to look just at the flesh and circumstances, or you can turn it over here and shine it on the spirit so that you see the glory of Christ. Are you tracking with me? Okay. So you got to be born again. Say that. I got to be born again. Now, touch your neighbor and say, you got to turn on the light. You got to turn on the light. Okay. So God takes us from darkness to light. Look at 1 Peter. Look at, look at 1 Peter chapter 2 and verses 9 and 10. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. You were in darkness, but the light of Christ shined on you. You became born again. He called you out of darkness and into the light. Now, the rest of your Christian experience is discovering the knowledge of what Jesus has done for you and what you can accomplish in Christ. He says here, he's called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Verse 10, once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Please say this out loud. I want to live in the light. I want to live in the, I want to live in the light. I want to turn the lights on. Okay. Now, do you need a new mirror? So I've used this visual. So the spirit, where your spirit compartment is, that's where the light of Christ is shining. That's where the knowledge of the word of God is. So this is the mirror that you have to look in. When somebody is blinded by the enemy, they can't see that at all. They're just in that dark tunnel. Put that, that, that picture back up of the dark tunnel. This, this is where they are. They, they don't. They can't see anything. In fact, a lot of times they're looking in a broken mirror. They're looking at the world's definition of success. They're looking at the world's definition of beauty. They're looking at the world's definition of morality or of marriage. Okay? So, so they, can't, they can't see. They need an entirely new mirror. They need to be born again. When you're born again, wow, now you can see. I'm going to be honest with you, and I could substantiate this by Scripture. There are many things that you see and understand that your friends don't see and understand because they don't have the mind of Christ, because they're not regenerated, because they're, they're not born again. No wonder you're in conflict. If I had time, I would take you over to 2 Corinthians 6 where he says that light and darkness have no fellowship. No wonder there's a conflict. Okay? They're looking in the wrong mirror. But when you become born again, you get this new mirror. Bible says you're a new creation in Christ. That's who you are. That's who you really are. So we're in the business now after being born again of discovering the real me, the real us, who we really are. Come on, I wasn't beaten and broken down and depressed and busted and all messed up. That's the old man. The new man is a new creation I look at it, now I see the potential that I have in Christ. Looking in the right mirror. Looking in the right mirror. Come on, someone say, I got I to gotta get a new mirror. Say that, I got to, come on, say this, I got to develop my imagination. I got to develop my imagination. So with this in mind, do, do you need new glasses? Have you ever had some glasses, those of you that, that wear glasses and then you realize you got to get a new prescription. Or have you ever put on the wrong glasses? Or did you ever start getting older and then you needed some reading glasses? Do you need, do you need some new glasses? Okay. So I put up this first image here. Okay. When, when things are blurry, you cannot see where you're going, can you? Okay. Have you ever been driving in heavy rain or driving in heavy snow or looking through a dirty windshield, you cannot see where you're going. Uh, pull up the next, the next visual here. 
But when it's clear, look what you can see. That's a whole lot better, amen? That's a whole lot better. So God wants you to, 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 to have the right glasses on. He wants you to see things the way, the way he wants you to see them. Unfortunately, go back to the blurry. This is the way many of us see life. This is the way many of us see our circumstances. This is the way, if you're, if you're totally honest, this is the way you see your future. Okay. Next picture, he wants it to be that way, where you see a beautiful road up ahead. And when I see that visual, I'm like, wow, I want to drive there. I want to go find out what's ahead. That's the way the Lord wants you to see. Next picture. So when you're driving, if, if things are blurry, you can't see very well, can you? But if things are clear, oh, now you're going to be able to stay on that road. You're not going to veer off it. Come on, someone say, I need a new pair of glasses. Say it. I, come on, you might, need, you might need a new pair of glasses. Go to the next picture. Yeah, go to the next picture. So God wants you to put on a new pair of glasses so you can actually see. See where he wants you to go. See what he wants you to do. And see things the way he sees them. Okay? Because many times we, everything is blurry. If you're here today and you're going through a tough time, it's hard to see that beautiful road where God's taking you. And I, I get it. I, I, I understand that. We, every, you're sitting next to someone who's been through the same thing. Every single one of us. And, and the challenge is putting on the right glasses so that you will see where, the way God sees it. In, in other words, the pain you're in is not going to last forever. You've you got to learn to shop temporary if you're in the middle of pain and say, you know what, I'm driving on out of this. Amen. So you put on the right glasses. So, so the question is, do you need new glasses? Now, three compartments of spirit, soul, and body. You get the new mirror. Now your soul decides which mirror you're going to look in. Are you going to look in the new mirror of the word of God? Or are you going to look in the broken mirror of the flesh, carnality, of the way the world defines things? Which way are you going to look? God's saying, hey, put your glasses on so that you can see this clearly. Could it be, my friends, could it be, my brother and sister, that much of us as believers, we haven't put our glasses on, so we're still looking in the broken mirror. So things are still blurry. God wants us to put the right glasses on so that we can read the word of God and discover the amazing potential that he has for a shot hallelujah if you believe that. Amen? So first of all, you've got to see and understand. See and understand. Look at John chapter 1. John chapter 1 and verses 4 and 5. In him, talking about Jesus, in him was life. And that life was the light of men. Oh, you've got to turn the light on. You've got to be born again. Verse 6. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Okay? So, so we have to see and understand it's when the light comes on us that we will understand the light. Those that are blinded by the enemy don't understand. And let's be honest, we have all been blinded by the enemy. Certainly before you were born again, but even after you came to Christ, there are many times that in our difficult times, things are blurry and we are blinded. We have not understood the light. Part of your Christian life is understanding. The light comes so you can understand the knowledge of Christ. The light comes so that you can understand what God has for you. So you have to see. You have to see when the lights come on, when you put the right glasses on, you see, and then you have to understand. That comes by the Spirit of God. God gives you under, understanding. Now, Having seen, you, you've got you've to see clearly. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians 13. You have to, you have to see clearly. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse, verse 12. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. We see but a poor reflection like in a mirror. Think about this. You have never really seen your face. No, nobody has really seen. All you've seen is a reflection. So your hope is that mirror is right. Okay. So, so nobody's ever seen. Even if you saw a good picture of yourself, you didn't, you've never, nobody has ever really seen themselves. We've only seen 
a reflection of ourselves, okay? So now we see, but a poor reflection. The, the point is this, is that even though we're in the 21st century and we have wonderful mirrors that evidently reflect who we are, the reality is this, you have never seen who you really are. That's why some psychologists say that you only use 10% of your brain. You only use 10% of your your potential. Can you imagine when you get to heaven being able to use all of the potential? You won't be limited by your frailty, by your sinful nature, by your humanity. Incredible potential, if I could tap into that now. But everything now is a, is a poor, poor reflection. I haven't even seen. Now, then I'll see face to face. Okay? He's talking about seeing Christ face to face. Uh, but watch this, now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. You know, when you get to heaven, you're going to really know who he is, who you are, and you're going to know all of your potential. Right now, we're just, it's partiality. There, there's partialness there. It's, it's not the fullness. So once you become born again, the light shines on. Really, the rest of your Christian life is discovering what's in this mirror, shining the light on it, wearing the right glasses, and now beginning to release that into your life. Now, you got great news. You're on your way to heaven, and you'll have full potential. So you got to see and understand. you got to see clearly. Let's say that out loud. Say, i got to see clearly. i got to see clearly. Now, the third thing is this. you got to see in the mirror of God's word. Okay, so look at James, and I've referenced this scripture a number of times, but in James chapter 1, in verse 23, anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Now, what a powerful verse. So you're born again, you got a new mirror, you're looking into to the Word of God, okay? But what we tend to do as believers is we look at that, then we leave. You come to church, you hear this amazing teaching, you hear this incredible stuff, you read about it in your devotions, but then when you go off into the world, you forget it. You forget who you are. You forget that you're righteous. You forget that God's given you peace. You forget that he's given you joy. You forget that he's given you power. You forget that he's healed you. You, you forget because you, you turn away and, and, then, and then you're over here and, and you forget who you are. You forget what you have. It would be like you having a billion dollars and then you went out and you acted like you had nothing and you were living on the streets. It would be just like that, but we do that. God says over here, hey, I've given you a wonderful marriage, and then you turn around here and you forget how wonderful that is, and you start acting stupid and doing things that you would never normally do. Why? Because you forgot who you were. Come on, somebody. Okay. Now, 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 let me say this a little more gently. You're over here, you're over here. And, and, and you realize, man, I got peace and joy. That's what you're looking. This is what God has promised me. Okay, But now, and it's very easy to do because we're so, so human. Then we turn over here and we forget. Why? Because we see all the circumstances. And that pressure hits us hard. And, and so we lose our peace and we lose our joy. We forget who we are. Do you know what God would love? He would love us to look into this mirror, see who we are, and then no matter what we face out here, no matter what rainstorm, no matter what we're facing, no, we still see clearly, and we still have the peace and the joy and the power of the Lord in our life. Amen, church? So you got to maybe get some new glasses, and you got to see in the mirror of God's word. So look to your neighbor and say, do you need, do you need a new mirror? Ask him. Come on, find somebody else. You need some new, new glasses. Okay. Third one is this. Do you need a new image? Do you need a new image? Okay. And the world is all about image. But I'm going to show you the image of Christ. Okay. So do you need a new image? All right. Now, 
When we think about image, I want you to think about imposing and superimposing. We use this term when we talk about working with pictures and superimposing something. Let me give you an example. Pull up this first image of superimposing. Okay. So along this river, you have a modern picture. But then you have a picture that was taken, looks like about 100 years ago, and they've superimposed that to match it right along the river. Same river, same wall, different people, different era. What's happened? They've superimposed that picture on, on, the, on the modern picture. Okay? So that, that's what we mean by, by superimposing something. Okay? Uh, let me give you a, a, another picture on, on, on superimposing. So this one here, you can combine photos in creative ways. And it says there where the adventure begins. Okay. Now all of that is by use of imagination. right? So what God is wanting you to do is to begin to superimpose your imagination into your situation, into your life, so that it begins to work for you. So if all you were imagining is bad things, that's what's going to manifest in your life. If all you imagine is, is pain and suffering, that's what's going to manifest. But if you begin to imagine that, you know what, I can have, life is an adventure. Life is good. Great things are going to happen. You've got to start getting a new image in your mind, and you have to superimpose that in your life. Superimposing comes from the word impose, which means to force. We use that negatively. Are you imposing that on me? No, I don't like that guy. He's imposing things on me, right, in a negative way, right? But it can also be positive. Wow, he's physically imposing. I'm talking about me. Okay? He's physically imposing, okay? Now, now, we can use it in a good, good way where, where the good things that you have, the values, are imposed on your situation. You can change the atmosphere of your work environment. How? By imposing the kingdom of God. Why? Because you see the kingdom of God. You're born again. <laughs> you don't understand what I'm saying. Three compartments, spirit, soul, and body. So in my spirit, I'm looking in the right mirror. The light is on. I'm seeing the knowledge of the glory of Christ, of Christ Jesus. I'm seeing the potential. Now I'm shining that light. Now I begin to impose that image on my soul and on my body and on my environment, my atmosphere, my situation. I say, now this, this is the image that I'm after. This is what I'm going for. This is what I'm shining. This is the image that I'm portraying. This is the image that I am imposing on my situation. In other words, the kingdom of God will come in my life. The will of God will be done in my life. What's happening? Imposing from the spirit through the soul into the physical realm. Come on, just let that sink into your spirit. Let that sink into your spirit. Do you need a, a new image? Do you need a new image? So you need to let sh light shine on this new image. Go with me to Luke, Luke chapter 11. Okay, You need to let the light shine. In Luke chapter 11, Jesus says this in verses 33 to 36. No one lights a lamp and puts it in a place where it will be hidden. Okay? Now, we use, this, we use these verses a lot for evangelism. Rightly so. It's a great application. But I want you to think about this in terms of your success, in terms of you shining the light, imposing that picture, that image that God has of you, that you're developing of yourself into your situation. No one lights a lamp and puts it on a place where it will be hidden. Don't hide that. Or under a bowl, instead he puts it on its stand so that those who come in may see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eyes are good, your whole body also is full of light. But when they are bad, your body also is full of darkness. See to it then that the light within you is not darkness. Therefore, 
If, you, if your whole body is full of light and no part of it is dark, it will be completely lighted as when the light of a lamp shines on you. Man, that's powerful stuff. What Jesus is saying here, let me preach this for you, is in your soul, you can turn the lamp on, you can turn the lights on, you can put the flashlight on. And he says, don't let darkness come in. There is no fellowship with light and darkness. But just light up your whole life. Light it up, light up. See what you have in the spirit and shine it over onto the physical realm. Let your light shine. Okay, Not just evangelism, but start with your spirit, compartment your soul. Let it shine into your soul, your intellect, your emotion, your will, every part of you. And let it shine into your body, the physical realm, that area, your situation. It is shining and you are imposing it so that your atmosphere will change, your life will change, your environment will change, your job situation will change, your relationships will change. Come on, somebody, you are imposing light on the darkness. Amen, Amen church. So light shines on your new image. Don't hide it. Don't hide who you are. Don't hide your image. See, it all begins with don't, don't hide the fact that you're a Christian. Don't hide the fact that you're righteous in Christ. Don't hide the fact that you have peace and joy. Don't hide the fact that you're an overcomer, that you're above and not beneath, that you're the head and not the tail. Amen. So everybody else at work can whine, but you're not going to whine because you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You're not going to stay forever in the desert. Let them whine, but that's not who you are. So you let your light shine and say, hey, 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 I'm, I'm coming out of here. Amen. I'm coming out of this situation. So you guys are fearful. You guys are complaining. You guys are backbiting. You guys are tearing each other down. You guys are scandalous. You guys are, are slanderous. But that's not me. This is who I am. And I'm shining my light over here, and I'm rising above all of that. Amen, <laughs> amen. and amen and amen. So light, shine light on your new image. And then shine the light on your new wardrobe. I told you before, you have robes of righteousness. Amen. You are righteousness. you got to dress for success. So Luke 12, verse 35, Jesus says this, Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning. Don't miss the tie-in. Don't miss the connection. Don't miss the tie-in. Yeah, I know we talk about this evangelism, rightly so. But watch this. Be dressed ready for success. Be dressed ready for service. Be dressed ready for ministry. Be dressed ready to accomplish incredible things. Be dressed and keep your light shining on that. That's what you're doing. You're shining the light. Keep the light shining on the fact that you are dressed for success. You're dressed for service to the Lord. You're dressed to please him. You're wearing your robes of light, righteousness. You are shining the light on who you really are. Don't hide it but who you really are. Amen? Say this out loud. Say, I look good. Say this, I'm dressed for success. Okay? Now, I am not promoting pride. That's a whole other message. I'm promoting confidence in Christ. Hallelujah. Say it again. Say, say I look good. Amen. Now, tell your spouse if you're married. I've been trying to tell you that for years. Amen. So let your light shine on your new wardrobe. Thirdly, light, as you let your light shine, light shows you the truth. Shows you the truth. So look at Romans chapter 4. Romans 4 and verse 18. Against all hope. Now, now keep in mind, we talked about this, swapping out hope with imagination. So against all imagination or against all hope, okay? Abraham, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed. In his imagination, he believed. And so became the father of many nations, just as it has been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Okay, now watch this, watch this. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. So he faced the fact, okay, the fact, the fact, 
The doctor gives you a fact. You're sick. Fact. Okay? You can't pay your bills. You're poor. Fact. You're in debt. Fact. That, that you, you get the bad information. He, he faced the fact that his, his body was as good as dead. But watch this. Watch this. Since he was about 100 years old and Sarah's womb was also dead. Verse 20. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Fact. Your body is sick, but I'm persuaded, because the light is shining, I'm persuaded that he has promised me that I'm going to be healed. <laughs> fact, in debt, can't pay your bills, but I am fully persuaded by the promise of what he spoke about, that I'm going to get out of debt, and he's going to prosper me, and I'm going to be a blessing to other people. Amen? Amen? Amen. Fact, relationships are, are, are in all turmoil, dysfunctional. Yeah, but the promise is he's going to heal those, and I'm going to learn to function properly and have a good marriage and have good parenting skills good interactions with other people. That is the promise. And so in reality, truth overrides fact. The promise, watch this, is imposed on your fact. <laughs> your, the, the, the promise that comes from the Spirit is superimposed through your soul into your body, and so you're healed in Jesus' name. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel revelation. So, so in your spirit, in this, in this compartment over here, the light is shining. The promises are available. You find that by looking in the word, the mirror of the word of God. It's perfect. Now you superimpose that by shining the light on your spirit, renewing your mind to that to the reality of those things. And I'm here to tell you today, the spirit realm is more real than your body, even though you're living in your body. Because your body's going to pass away, but your spirit will live forever. Now you superimpose that on your body, and your body begins to be healed, healthy, and whole in Jesus' name. Because you have superimposed that on it. Amen, Amen church? So the light shows you the truth, shine. So Abraham faced the facts of his body, but hoped, or rather we could say imagined, the promise. Abraham faced the facts of his body, of his flesh, of this temporal realm, but he hoped for, he imagined the promise. He imagined the promise. And so the question is, do you need a new mirror? Here's the mirror. Do you need new glasses? And do you need a new image? Amen, church? Amen. Now, let me, let me sew this up for you. Okay, Look at 1 Thessalonians 5.23. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, Now God himself, the God of peace, may he sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. At your spirit, say spirit, soul, and body, okay? So your whole spirit, soul, and body, okay? So let me give you three examples to differentiate between spirit, soul, and body, okay? We're talking about light shining. We're talking about being able to see. We're talking about being able to understand. So at, in Mark chapter 10, we see somebody who's blind, but Jesus opens their eyes. Before you're born again, the enemy blinds you. We read that. Blinds you. You cannot see. You're living in that dark tunnel. Okay. Now, Mark chapter 10, and look at 46. And then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city of blind man. Bartimaeus, that is son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, they began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then he rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. 
And so they called the blind man, cheer up on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Would you please say that out loud? Say, I want to see. I want to see. I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. His blind eyes were open. That's being born again. Literally, his eyes were open. But when you become born again, the light shines. And now you can see the kingdom of God. Okay? So, so, so the spirit becomes born again. Blind eyes are open. Now, let's talk about the soul. Look at Mark chapter 8, verses 22 to, to 23. And then they came to Bethesda, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes, don't let that throw you, when he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people, but they're like trees walking around. So he's not seeing perfectly, right? Verse 25, once more Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes, and then his eyes were opened, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. This is your soul, where you begin to see clearly. When you come to Christ, listen, before you were born again, if you were a jerk, you might have still been a jerk the next day. Why? Because you haven't been transformed or changed, right? Okay. So, so you, 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 you become changed, you become more Christ-like. Okay? Now, you don't see everything right away. You're blind. Wait a minute, my eyes were open. Yeah, but in your soul, he's touching your eyes <clears throat> Haven't you put these glasses on so that you can see a little more clearly because you didn't see them clearly? If you grew up a certain way with certain behavior patterns and thought patterns and habits, those kind of things, that doesn't necessarily change overnight. Albeit, I know that some people get set free instantly, but usually in the process of transformation, it takes a little bit of time. It takes you putting on these glasses and renewing your mind and looking in this right mirror. It takes some time. And so you, you, you may not see entirely. I, I've been walking with the Lord a long time, but I'm still seeing new things. I'm seeing who I really am, and I want to superimpose that into my life and into my situation. I'm starting to see things like I didn't see 20 years ago. Maybe I was stumbling around in the dark. Yeah, I was born again, but I was still stumbling and banging my head up against the wall trying to figure things out. But now I'm starting to see a little more clearly, but it's a process. That's your soul. That's your soul. But then what about your, your body? Look at Matthew chapter 5. Look at Matthew 5. Okay. Now Jesus says this in Matthew 5 in verses 14 to 16. You're the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. What are you doing? You're shining that light on your body, on this realm, on this physicality, on this situation, on these circumstances. You are shining the light, superimposing that. Light is turned on, correct lenses are being wear, worn, and you are superimposing, shining this light into the physical realm. From the compartment of your spirit to your soul, soul makes the decision into the body, it manifests into your situation. Amen, church? Come on, someone say, i got to develop my imagination. Say it, i got to i got to develop my imagination. So let me wrap this up for you. The other day I went running <clears throat> on the beach, and my son took a picture of me. Why don't we put that picture up of me running? So here I am running on the beach. <laughs> what? What? What's the matter with you? Why, Why can't you imagine? You, you don't believe that. Why can't you believe that? You don't believe that because you don't have an imagination. (laughs) 
All right. Some of you think it's this next picture. This is what you think. It, you think this was me <laughs> running on the beach, okay? <laughs> All right. All right. But it's because you don't have any imagination. <laughs> now, I, I use that in fun. I use that in fun. But, but many times as believers, you've been born again a long time. But when you look in the mirror or when you think about things, this is the next picture you see. There it is. Yeah, thank you. So many of us, when we look into the mirror or when we think about our lives, this is what we, this is what we see. So I, I use the first picture for fun, but, but the reality is many of us, when we're looking in, in the mirror, this is what we think are, is going to happen. And we read about it over here, but we turn and we, we forget because this is our circumstances. Because maybe all you've had is pain your whole life or disappointment. And so that's what you see. But what I want to challenge you on, encourage you in a loving way and preach and declare with faith is really this last picture. So even if you were crying, come on, everybody say, that's me, that's me, that's me. So, so God wants to get us to the place where even if we've been crying, that just like Abraham, we were so persuaded by the promise that we say this crying is temporary. Joy is coming my way. Weeping may remain for a night, but, jo but joy, but joy comes in in the morning. This pain is temporary, but, but that's where I'm going. Crushing debt, temporary, prosperity is coming. Physically sick and pain in your body, but healing's coming. Broken marriage, torn relationships, but peace is coming. Amen, church? Come on, say this out loud. I want to develop my imagination. I want to develop my imagination. Let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet.